Good morning, friends. This is Mary Vano from St. Margaret's Church. It has been a long time, too long, since we have been able to be at St. Margaret's together. I miss you so much, but I'm glad that you are watching this video today because I'm here to once again remind you that Jesus loves you and remind you that I love you and that all of us are here together as friends and followers of Jesus. So thank you for watching this video today. Today I want to tell you about our story that comes from the 18th chapter of Matthew's Gospel for this Sunday. In this chapter, Matthew has been, or Jesus has been teaching his followers about how to handle it when they hurt one another in their community. What to do if somebody sins against you. And he's been teaching his followers that if somebody sins, you should go and talk to them and listen. And if they don't listen to you, then go back again, bring another friend, see if they'll listen to you another time. And if they still don't listen, keep going back. It's really about grace and loving each other. And so Peter asks a really important follow-up question. Peter says to Jesus, Jesus, how many times should we forgive? It's a good question. It's a really good question. And to think about this, I want us to think about some of the games that we play. I bet some of you play soccer. Well, if you play soccer, then you know that if you commit a foul, if you don't follow the rules of the game, if you do something wrong, the referee will probably issue you a yellow card. That's a warning. It's a sign that you did something wrong and you better not do it again. In soccer, again, if you get a yellow card, and then you still break the rules another time, then the referee may give you a red card, which means you're out of the game. You don't get to play anymore. So really, you just only get one opportunity at forgiveness in soccer. If you're playing basketball, of course, there are rules of basketball as well. And if you break them, if you foul another player, then again, the referees will will keep track of your fouls. In basketball, you get five chances usually before they say, that's it, you're done, you're out of the game. So it's really common for us to have some limits about how much breaking the rules are we going to tolerate. Well, in the Jewish tradition that Peter understood in the first century, it was common for the Jewish teachers to say, you know, you really should forgive people at least three times. And after that, you don't have to. So three times, if somebody tells a lie, you can say, okay, I forgive you. We'll move on. If they maybe say something hurtful, that's a second sin. Okay, but still, we'll forgive you. Maybe they don't do what you ask them to do. Third sin, okay, maybe you still will forgive you, but the fourth time, maybe maybe she doesn't show up when you need her to be there for you. The fourth time she says, nope, we're done. I've forgiven you three times and that's all. Well, Peter is starting to learn that Jesus is more generous than most of us. So Peter suggests an answer. He says, how about we forgive people seven times, Jesus? That's more than twice the usual expectation, twice the amount of mercy that we might give. Seven times. Well, Peter is headed in the right direction anyway. But what Jesus says in response to Jesus is to Peter's question, how many times should we forgive? Jesus says, not seven, but seven times seventy. Seven times seventy. I bet some of you might know how to do that math. Seven times seventy is four hundred and ninety. Forgive someone four hundred and ninety times? That's extreme. Well, 
I think that some people thought, surely Jesus didn't really say seven times 70. I think maybe he just said 77 times. That's still a lot, though. That is still so many opportunities at forgiveness. I could not keep track of the sins if I were to follow Jesus' teaching there. Well, and that's the point, isn't it? Jesus wants us to stop counting, to stop counting up the number of people's sins and remembering them only for the ways that they have failed you. Instead, Jesus wants us to remember that we all need mercy sometimes. We all need forgiveness. God loves us so much that any time we ask for forgiveness, God will forgive us. So we need to be the, as generous as God, forgiving others as often as we can. So remember that today, friends. Remember that Jesus loves you and forgives you, and that we too need to forgive one another. Now it has been so long since we have been able to be in church together that I am missing our opportunities to sing together. So today I thought I would sing you a song. And you guys should know this one. You should know how it works. So we're going to sing This is the Day the Lord Has Made and I hope that you'll sing with me. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Thank you for joining us today, friends. It is so good to be with you. I pray that you are well, and I look forward to when we can be together again.